Right, it is time for Friday Reads. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you my Friday Reads video. In my Friday Reads video, I usually share the books that I finished, the books I started, and anything interesting about books I'm carrying over week to week. However, this week, as it is a new month and I am participating in three readathons that started on March 1st, this is mostly going to be what I have started for each of the three readathons. Those three readathons are March of the Mammoths, Translatathon, and March Mystery. Madness. I'm going to leave um, the table of contents on the progress bar. So if there's one readathon that you just can't wait one more moment to hear about, you can jump right to it. And of course, as always in the description box, I'll leave links to announcement videos and all of the books that I mentioned and all the people I mentioned and all, you know, all the things will be there. Um, so I am going to start with uh, March of the Mammoths. This is actually my first year participating in March of the Mammoths, which is a readathon that is by Jason from Old Blues Chapter and Verse. Lukash from A Cruel Reader's Thesis and Al from Big Al Books. Um, it runs all month and the um, go goal of the readathon is to encourage people to read books that are 800 pages or more. So I picked a book that I've been talking about for ages and it's a book that is one of the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR. Like literally the first day I joined Goodreads, I added this to my TBR. I was like, yeah, I want to read that. Um, and it's also one of the longest books, of course, because it's March of the Mammoths. It's one of the longest books on my Goodreads TBR and I have been sharing on Instagram my process a bit, the journey a little bit because I have been altering this book so that it's in literally more manageable chunks and that is Les Miserables. Um, so first I'm going to just talk a little bit about the book and my approach to the book and then I'm going to share a little bit about how the alteration has or the deconstruction and reconstruction has gone. So first up this is by Victor Hugo. This is widely, wildly popular notable, referenceable book, um, known book, known book. Um, so, and this is translated by Christine Doniger. Don Don wow, I don't, I'm not sure about that. Don Doniger. Don not sure. So that's the translator. This is translated from the French. Um, I know the story from um, the musical. Um, I have seen the musical several times, both when it came out let's just say the first time and not the year. And then I also saw it again, I think like 2013 or so. Um, I've also seen the film. And at one point I did know word for word the entire musical and I could sing it from start to finish. Um, probably going to do that. I could probably start, you know, look down, look down. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to sing. We're not going to go there. So anyway, so I know the story ish. I don't know. I have no idea how closely this follows that. Um, but um, we shall see. <laughs> and my approach to reading this is actually a little bit different than I expected. I actually decided to go with giving myself um, a minute count for this. And I'm going to just try and read it daily for 20 minutes. Um, it is a slower read. Um, it, it, there's a lot of words on the page. It is. It has a fair amount of chapters. So it's pretty easy to you know, just read to the end of the chapter, sort of like when the 20 minutes hit. And I think I'm going to go for consistency for now, just reading 20 minutes. And then if it feels good, I can increase that. Um, but and I'm going to also try and read it earlier in the day because it's uh, older work and it's a uh, heavier work for me when I read at night, it's better to have something that's a little more accessible. Um, so yeah, but it also feels good to read it in the middle of the day or something because then I'm like done. I'm like, I got my reading done. Like, you know, <laughs> Oh, which is really good. Um, it is actually a pretty, I was gonna say dismal, but not, I wouldn't go that far. It is definitely uh, not challenging yet. I'm sure it will get there, in t not in terms of comprehension. Um, actually, that's the reason why I decided to go for a minute per day, because I thought if I gave myself a page count, I would be rushing to get to that page count and skip over things. And I think with a book that's this long, I want to be really firmly centered in the story and know the characters. So that's why I'm giving myself an amount of time. And if I feel like I read half a page and I spaced out, I'm going to go back and reread it because I don't want to get 300 pages in and then be like, I don't really understand what's going on here. I'm sure that probably will happen, but anything I can do to prevent it, I'm going to do. So, but this is like, it's, it's like, uh, the, so far I, I, I don't know why I am surprised, um, but definitely one of the themes is poverty, uh, which is a challenging subject to be with. Um, and uh, also there's a fair amount of uh, religious content, at least to begin, um, and I was not expecting that. And 
that is definitely not my favorite. So I don't know how prevalent that is through the story. That's not something I was expecting from the musical. Um, so I don't know if it's just where we start. So yeah, so I am enjoying like reading it. Um, it's well written. Um, I don't know if I'm any good judge for her <laughs> knowing if something is well written. That's not something I usually comment on like at all. But like, in terms of a classic, it's more accessible than I, I expected. Um, and, um, you know, so I, you know, if I didn't know what it was, if someone gave it to me like Unbound or something, I like, I want to be terribly interested. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, um, given the theme so far, um, but I am curious to see where it goes. And um, yeah, so I'm going to stick with it. So this is the first volume and this one, um, the book is actually separated out into five books which worked out perfectly. So it's 1,304 pages and I split it out into five volumes, each of which is between two to 300 pages, which is perfect for me. That is the sweet spot in terms of um, like holding it in my hands. And that's the reason why I rebound the books is for me, I can hold a book that's this size. I cannot hold a book that's this size, especially not every day until I'm done. Like, it's just not possible. I did try and read it on Kindle, but I felt like I was making so little progress that it was, you know, that was a while ago. But still, it's like when you pr turn the page, like, and then, it, like, it's 1%, 1%, 1%. Not inspiring. So, um, yeah, so what I did was I chopped it up, and then I created new covers and end pages. So the front and back this is the back, the front and the back, both only have um, half a cover, they only need half a cover, and then they maintain their other cover, but I did create new end pages, and then I created a spacer page to glue to the text block. Um, I did mess up, and I have sort of an extra piece of paper, um, which made these a bit heavier, which wasn't the way to go. So that is the back, and it's end paper, and then it has its own spacer page that is glued to the text block. Um, and then the center versions have both the front and back cover that I used as one, one large uh, piece of paper. These are mostly from art books um, or geography books, like coffee table books. Um, so, and I did try and go with a bit of a red theme, a red and blue theme because of the color of the France flag. I, this one's a bit strange, I know that. <laughs> I, had, I only had so many flowers and I really liked the flowers and I loved these end papers which uh, were scrapbooking papers, which is really nice because then I ended up having the same end papers in the front and the back. So this one ended up having some issues. I It pulled away um, from the spine so I had to go with masking, uh, not masking tape, but scotch tape. So I'm really unhappy about that. And this one as well. Like I did all this work and then the last page is often just pulled away from the text block. I think what happened is I think because I picked heavier uh, paper for the covers and I had that extra layer because I goofed. I, I was supposed to just glue half of a clear piece of paper, a white piece of paper to the end papers. Instead, I... I did a whole page on the back of the end papers. I don't know. This is why I did. I was going to do a tutorial on how to do this, and I'm so glad I didn't because I've just messed up left, right, and center. But I'm okay with it because this is all in service of being able to read the book, right? Like for me, I can't hold a 1300 page book. I can hold a 300 page volume. So this will get me to read the book. So if these turned out perfectly and gorgeous and beautiful and stuff, that would have been great. You know, I'm not thrilled that they have scotch tape in the center of them and make that awful noise, but I can still read them, which was the point. So I showed this one, and then this is one of the other volumes, which is... This one I actually really like, too. Um, I thought the cover turned out quite nice. And again, I found that scrapbooking paper, which means the end pages match, which is nice. This one actually is, I think, one of the thinnest ones, and I didn't have any issues with it. It didn't pull away... The text block didn't pull away from the end papers, so that one ended up being fine. And this one, which was the fourth volume and has this strange, I don't know if it's a sea creature, I have no idea, maybe a plant. 
I don't know. Um, this one is the largest of the volumes and I had the most trouble with. And I also used heavier paper for both the, ins the end papers and the cover. And these are Robert Bateman paintings because I got one from my Value Village uh, Robert Bateman book. Um, but um, yeah, and so I think the fact that I went with the heavier versions and this ended up being the largest, I just had the, the biggest challenges with it because it, I had several, several mishaps. I had to re-glue, re-glue scotch tape just it kept on pulling away scotch tape just pulled right away like there was and i this one i tried to repair several times and i just did not have much luck anyway that being said i feel like i still am able to read the book which is the goal in nice chunks so am i sad that it wasn't perfect of of course, of course, but it ended up turning out okay, and that's fine. If I need to repair it along the way, I need to repair it along the way. That's also fine. So that's a little bit on that. I think I will do a video later about some of the different techniques I use because this is sort of the most intensive, like with nice and papers. I do, I do also have just an example right here of just like a really simple, um, what like a real a paper, mass market paperback. I just split it in half, and just redid the sides and this is just like the cover of like a like a little notebook and just one page for the inside and that's it and then the sides are white duct tape and I sprocket printed the cover so this took way less time and energy and I think it looks just fine so but anyway, so anyway, so now I'm getting um, a little off track, but yeah, so people had, um, you know, wanted to see that, so I thought I would share, and yeah, and I, I, <laughs> I have no idea, I'm, get, I'm trying not to get hung up on numbers in terms of how fast or slow I'm reading Lame is, but being the person I am, and being a numbers person, my brain is calculating it, but I'm trying my best not to worry about it, um, and just slow and steady, and just, you know, be the tortoise, and that's okay, and uh, just keep at it, and uh, I, I'll be curious to see how long it takes before something feels a little bit familiar because so far not so much but I'm only like I'm like 29 pages in so but that means I calculated it and now I'm under 1300 pages I'm at 1275 so making progress making progress all progress is good progress so that is March of the Mammoths now on to Translate-a-thon um, Translate-a-thon is a readathon that runs from March 1st to March 14th and it is hosted by Rhea the book finch and it is all about reading translated works um, And I really liked one of the bonus prompts this round which is which was to read a book from a uh, language that you hadn't read from translated for Oh wow, that sentence was not quite in the right order um, because and I it made me realize how much I read that is translated from French. Um, I don't know if that's being Canadian or, or what. Um, not that I read a lot of French Canadian translated works, but I have read a fair amount translated from the French. Um, I also, because I read a fair amount of manga, read uh, a lot of Japanese uh, translated works, and because I'm reading through the works of Ibsen, I read a fair amount of Norwegian <laughs> translated works. So I reached out and both um, Anita from Anita Reads and Rhea uh, shared um, recommendations for books to read, and I took up both of them in terms of what to start. So uh, Anita's recommendation, and she has read these books herself, and I picked them up on her recommendation, and now like in terms of getting the first book, and now I am finally reading the first book, and that is The Devil's Apprentice by Kenneth B. Anderson, um, and this is, uh, it's sort of like a dark fantasy horror novel about a kid who ends up in hell. Um, I'm still, I'm pretty early on in it, I'm only about 10% into it, but I'm quite enjoying it. Um, it kind of feels like maybe he really shouldn't be there maybe you know he seems kind of like a very genuine you know um, kind-hearted person but he ended up there so you know hmm um, I really like a lot of the uh, secondary characters that we've been introduced to so far it has a good amount of sort of levity and humor in it uh, not over the top but just sort of like I just really like the tone and the pace of it and um, of course there's some characters that are not nice <laughs> given the context and the setting but um, but there are some characters that are so I am really curious to see where this is going to go. Um, these are also, I'm reading it on Kindle, uh, the audiobooks are available on Scribd uh, for books one through five. I don't think the sixth book has been translated yet so that is, um, and I think the sixth book is the final book. So, but that's 
you know, I'm not there yet. I'm still in the first one and I am quite enjoying it. Um, I also, Rhea's suggestion was Black Sad, which is a graphic novel book or graphic novel series, comics, a series of comics. Um, and it, it actually could easily also fit for Merch Mystery Madness because so I haven't, I'm not that far into it. Um, and it follows a detective who um, finds out about um, a murder or someone who I assume it was murder. Seemed like it was murder. Um, and um, of someone he once knew, and now he is on the search for finding out what happened. I really like the um, uh, visual style of this. It's all animals, like, like upright animals, and just the expressions and the drawings are all really awesome. And um, yeah, it's noir, so it's a bit... Uh, tonally it's dark but um, I don't know and again has a sort of sense of not levity but like I keep on using that word I like never use that word I'm always worried I'm, I don't quite know what it means so it means lightness or humor right right that's what levity means I think um, and um, yeah so I'm really enjoying this um, I accidentally if you end up getting this from Hoopla though I got volume one. Usually volume one is like the first several bind ups, but in this case, volume one was the first comic. So look at the page count because they had both the comic and the first several bind ups. And so I ended up having to borrow it twice because I, <laughs> so I kind of goofed on that. So just, you know, I'm using a lot of rentals this month, I think, and I'm trying to ration them, um, especially because I know Jen from Remembered Reads is going to be doing a video about um, graphic novels or, or and comics and crime comics. So I'm, I'm trying to save my rentals to, uh, until I see that video because she always has great suggestions. So yeah, Black Sad. Um, so those are the two that I'm reading so far and I might, depending on how things go, even though this is translated from the French, I might pick up Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, this has been on sort of like every month TBR this year so far, and I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, I'm currently watching 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I've seen it before, and I read the book a couple years ago. Um, and this is sort of in the same loose series of extraordinary voyages which is like 50 books or works long um and um yeah so i might do that i've seen a film adaptation of this as well uh, but i like adventure stories so i thought it might be a good fit now on to march mystery madness which is created um or i don't know what the best way to describe it like elizabeth from lizzie Fay loves books is leading us in the charge of march mystery madness maybe that's the way to go and this is the um uh it's a month-long readathon all dedicated to mysteries there are so many co-hosts Di, Sarah, Jen, um the uh Matt, Laura, Latin Lector like so many, so many hosts. I will leave information down below. Check them out. And I really enjoyed watching. I watched the first half so far of their live kickoff, um, and uh, which has so many recommendations for mysteries in it. And uh, I highly recommend checking it out. I'll leave it down below. And I have to read. I have to watch the second half of that. So I haven't started anything for this so far. Although Black Sad definitely could be. Um, I didn't realize so much that it was a. It's a detective story, so it would definitely count for both Translated Han as well as March Mystery Madness. Um, but the graphic novel or comic that I do have my eye on for March Mystery Madness is Clue by Paul Allor. I did read a Clue graphic novel last year or comic bind up last year, um, it, which was different. So I don't know if this is just going to be my annual tradition to find some Clue related <laughs> book or something to to read during March Mystery Madness. I have no idea. And actually Sarah from Steeped in Books has created an original tag that is all centered on Clue, which I will leave a link to up above if you should like to partake. I really enjoyed watching that as well. So yeah, so this, um, I thought I, I like to start things off easy. I am actually like, even though I have participated in March Mystery Madness for several years, Mysteries is one of my least read genres and I have a hard time following plots and I just never, I always think the last person in the scene is who done it, and I'm just not very good at reading mysteries, but I love participating, and um, so I just, I just do my best, I just do my best, so Clue is definitely one that I want to read, one that is like way more serious, and I found this on uh, Scribd, um, and uh, it popped out because it's only 150 pages, and it is The Pledge by Friedrich 
Durin mat, I think. Friedrich, Friedrich. Um, and this is, who is a Swiss author, and um, this is a novella, um, although for me 150 pages is, is like for a mystery, is, is still going to be a challenge. And it looks quite dark, and I have a feeling even just from lightly reading some descriptions... I think I've already figured it out before even reading it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but I still think I might give it a shot. Um, and it is also translated. Um, but I can't figure out from what language without... Like, I looked on Wikipedia and I think it's there, but I don't I don't want to accidentally figure out what the thing is in this one because I'm sure it really feels like there's a thing in this one. And um, I think I have figured it out. But anyway, I'm curious to see if... May maybe I think that might be a better approach for mysteries with me because I get a little hung up on not wanting to know what the thing is. But, like, sometimes I think it's unavoidable. Um, but I think if I could read them with the sense of trying to figure it out or I don't know anyway I don't have to change my ways <laughs> but um I just I get I get so I don't like spoilers so and I think it's a genre that you can really easily hear spoilers but sometimes there's lots of interesting discussions about format and so if I can think of it from a different like a more intellectual perspective of how a story is told that might be more enjoyable, but I don't like seeing the wizard behind the curtain, so I'm not sure. So anyway, I don't know, has anyone read The Pledge? I think I think it might have been made into a film when I was looking on Pinterest. I got some film images, and I think I've seen the film, but I don't know if the film was based on the book. And I don't want to look it up because I think I've seen the film, and then I'll do that whole, like, get to 75% and realize I know what the story is, and then be all mad. So maybe I should just pick something else. I do have a couple of other options. I did put some Instagram polls up. These are some books that I picked up uh, uh, a couple years ago at uh, Bookends. So I have Free Draw by Shelley Singer. I just love these covers. Um, so there's that one. Um, the Night the God Smiled by Eric Wright and Inspector Charlie Salter novel. This one is set in Toronto. So this one's a Canadian one. And then the one that won the poll by a landslide is The Mind Murderers by Jean-William Van Der... Vettering? I don't know if it's Vettering, V or W pronunciation. Um, it's, this is, I thought this was, I thought I was going to look out and have this be translated, uh, but I don't think it was. I think it's a Dutch author, but not translated. There's no translator noted. Um, but this one, the poll, I did a pick it or skip it poll on Instagram, and this got 100% said, people said pick it. I think this one got the least, it got less than 50% pick it. And this got 60% picket. And I thought that was a fun way to do, I did it in stories, and it was a fun way to have three books, like three things be against each other, but not literally against each other. It's just each one was like, pick it or skip it, pick it or skip it. So I thought that worked out well. So this was the winner. <clears throat> so technically I should read it. Um, but uh, we shall see if that happens. I don't know. So it does look interesting. It is like several in a series, like several into a series, but... I think so often with mysteries you can just jump in. Um, and then the other option is I might pick up a book um, for March Mystery Madness that I've already started reading and I realized that one that would also work for Translate-a-thon is The Girl Who Played With Fire, which I started by Stig Larsson, translated from the Swedish, which I started last year and still have yet to finish. It's my second attempt. And I don't know, it might be smart to go with it and just get it done. Just get it done. So... I got to, I got further this time than last time. Maybe? I'm not sure. I'm just, I've seen the movies. I, I don't even know why I keep feeling like I should finish it. And then the other one, which I really don't know if I'll do, is The Born Identity. This is another one I recovered, so. Uh, there. The Born Identity by Robert Ludlum. And, um which is one of the oldest books on my Goodreads TBR. Now, this one doesn't feel like a mystery to me so much. It's a, more of a thriller, I'd say. Uh, but it doesn't feel like a mystery because I've seen the film, so I know the story. So it is technically a mystery, but does it is it a mystery to me? I don't know. Does it say the genre? Sometimes it says the genre in the front, and sometimes it doesn't. I don't see it off the top of my head. But... 
yeah, so that's another option too. Should I continue something that I've already started? Both of those I started quite a while ago. Both of those are in the 600 page zone. So maybe slowly working through one of them this month would be a good way to go. Or the pledge. Or something else. Or clue. Clue I will read. I, I can I can I can read clue I feel confident in that it's all the other ones that I'm like ah. <laughs> I guess I haven't maybe found the subset of mystery that's a real Shannon zone I think this is the closest I like adventure stories but um and like I read I read some of the Numa files but I didn't enjoy them like I like the adventurous spirit but they both had the two that I read both had some gender crap in them, and so I think that might be something that bothers me. Well, I know that's something that bothers me, but I haven't found an author that, that does sort of that kind of adventure sort of stuff that is more gender balanced. So, I don't know. The search continues. It's a mystery in and of itself. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Those are a lot of the books and, and alterations of books and all that kind of stuff. This one was a long one. I knew that was going to happen. Let me know, are you participating in any of these readathons? Um, I know there's also, um, there's more readathons. There's the Irish readathon. I do have an Irish art book that I might read. I don't know if that's a bit too cheeky to, to read like a nonfiction art book, but it's about Irish art, so I might, I might participate in that as well. So many readathons, and I'm looking forward to everyone's videos about them. Lots of people are doing um, live streams or book clubs, or not book clubs, uh, like re book, like book read-alongs, read-alongs, buddy read type things. Oh wow, is that what's that word? Out of words. I'm out of words, and um, yeah, so that's what I'm reading, so I gotta get this up so I can read my pages of Les Mis, or read my 20 minutes of Les Mis. It'll probably take longer than that to upload because this video is so long. Now I am rambling. Okay, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead, and uh, enjoy all of the readathon goodness. Alright, thanks so much for watching.